on this episode of the Globe News Report. The effects are still present after a devastating earthquake in Syria. Elkhart County faces flooding after a major storm. The band Lotus adds a stop to their tour for a Goshen homecoming. And the Globe visits New York City for the first time in three years. All this and more on the Globe News Report. Welcome to the Globe News Report. I'm Kate Boddicker. And I'm Mike Morell. Mike, it's been over a month since the last Globe News Report, and a lot has happened since then. You are, you are not kidding. It was a busy February. The Lotus concert, some absolutely crazy weather, and of course, our trip to New York City. Yeah, I mean, I can't wait to talk about it. It was such an amazing trip. But first, we do have to turn our attention to a more serious topic. That's right, Kate. Here in Goshen, Indiana, a natural disaster that occurs on another continent can feel a million miles away. But for several Goshen College students, it feels like right next door. Seth Smith Kaufman has the story. Morning of February 6th, an earthquake with a magnitude of 7.8 struck southern Turkey as well as northern Syria. The scenes from the disaster rolled in. Cities had been leveled, many were still trapped under rubble. For some here in the United States, such a disaster seemed a world away. However, some here in the Goshen community are more intimately connected and seeking to bring aid to those in need. Uh, I'm Sude. Um, I'm from Istanbul, Turkey, so the west side of Turkey. In Turkey, small earthquakes are common, but this one was like any other. So normally we have a lot of earthquakes because we're in that zone. Uh, so we're kind of like used to it. I'm used to hearing, oh, there has been an earthquake, 3.5, 4.1. But this one, I'm seeing like, where did it happen? Going on Twitter. But I see like 10 cities, 15 cities. I felt here, I felt here. Are you okay? It was so big. It was the biggest earthquake I've seen in my life. Luckily for her, most of her immediate family was safe, but not everyone she knew made it through. Um, I lost like three of my relatives. Um, I wasn't close with them because they're, it's really crowded. I didn't get to know them that much. One of them was um, 25 years old. Uh, he was going to be a teacher. I saw someone say like, oh, everyone asks if our family is okay, but it's just we're not okay, even if it's not our family. It's Suda at first was shocked and unsure how to respond to this, but soon she decided to take action for good. Okay, it's a bit like when you see something big like this, your life and what you do in the college and everything becomes a bit irrelevant. Um, if they want to donate, uh, we have ahbap.org, which is like ahbap.org. Um, they can trust it. Uh, they raised more than a billion liras now. They're the most preferred one. And it's just for the kids who lost their parents. Um, for the parents who lost their kids, houses, families, like. As well as financial support, she says that simple interactions with people you may know is always beneficial. Yeah, I think it's good to ask people like how they're doing if you have a Turkish friend or someone. Another local group that is trying to make change from far away is Mennonite Central Community, whose Great Lakes office is located in Goshen. Eric Kurtz, the executive director at MCC Great Lakes, works on relief work around the world. For the, over the last uh, more than 10 years, we have been responding to the uh, conflict uh, in Syria, uh, in places like Aleppo. For MCC, it's all about partnering with local organizations already on the ground. So our, our partners uh, there in, in those areas are responding by trying to provide basic needs, uh, shelter, food, water, uh, health care. Part of MCC's work is with material aid. People who uh, donate and volunteer their time to put together kits and comforters um, and other material aid um, that gets you know, sent around the world to places like Syria. But like Suda, for MCC and Kurtz, it's mostly about financial support. You know, specifically for the earthquake, um, the financial donations are really key and what's needed right now in terms of an urgent response. You can find reliable resources and places to donate down below in the description. From everyone here at Glow Media, our hearts go out to those in need. This is Seth Smith Kaufman reporting for Globe Media. Thanks to Seth for the report. If you're interested in assisting financially, you can reach the Mennonite Central Committee at mcc.org. After the break, we're going to take a closer look at the aftermath of another natural event that happened right here in Elkhart County. And later, more details on the concert that 911 The Globe was promoting for months. 
for the best college radio station in the nation. It's not New York City or Chicago. It's Goshen College. Our broadcasting program is just one of Goshen's 35 outstanding majors. At Goshen College, you will work one-on-one with top professionals and get studio time in your first semester. You can call a game from the playing field or broadcast from a downtown radio studio. How do I know Goshen was the best choice? Right after graduation, I'll start my new job as a radio morning show co-host. Take the next step in your broadcasting career. Welcome back to the Globe News Report. Kate, you and I were in different parts of Ohio this past weekend when some crazy weather happened here. I mean, crazy weather indeed. A large mixture of rain and snow that even included thunder snow, a rare winter mix of snow and lightning. In the aftermath, the local area found itself with more water than it could handle. Amelia Lee has the details. No, this isn't Fiddler Pond behind me. This is actually Shanklin Park, which has been overrun by flooding after recent winter weather. The National Weather Service says that the Elkhart River has reached a double crest. That means the water level has reduced, but it's rising again. Danny Sink, fire chief for the Goshen Fire Department, has the details. So it did, it crested um, around the 28th of February uh, in, in the morning. It crested again around March 6th and it's on the way down. He says that the flooding was worse in 2018 when the flood crested to 12 and a half feet. 2018 was a combination of frozen ground, a tremendous amount of snow, and then a tremendous amount of rain all at one time when the snow thaws. Now the city is doing what they can to keep the community safe amidst the flooding. Aaron Sawatsky Kingsley, director of the Department of Environmental Resilience, is leading the way with the flood resilience plan in Goshen. The, the flood plan specifies a number of different um, strategies that we need to be pursuing in order to prepare for flooding, to prepare for projected future flooding. He says that parts of the city are meant to see flooding. Those floodplains, they should have water in them whenever we have a flood event. Those, those floodplains, um, you know, were, were created over decades and centuries and, and even millennia as the places that flood water should go to. And so we want to see the, the water there when there's a flood. Sink, a longtime resident in Goshen, has seen the full effect of flooding. If you were born and raised here like myself, what you see in like in Rogers Park right now and in Shanklin Park, what, what we're seeing now is not unusual for us. Although some flooding is normal, it's still important to do what you can to stay safe. Stay out of the water. Uh, that's, that's the main thing. Um, and, then, and then pay attention to the alerts that come out from the weather service um, that, help us to, that help us to predict where flooding is going to be um, because that can help us to stay out of the way too. The real safety tip is just to be aware. Again, be plugged into social media, TV, radio. There's also a number to call. 911 will get the right agency. More information on the Flood Resilience Plan can be found on the Flood Zone page of the Goshen City website. A meeting is taking place to discuss the plan. And that'll be at Trot Pavilion uh, Thursday, March 16th, 4.30 to 6.30 p.m. The public are welcome to come. A gauge is located off the northeast corner of the Indiana Avenue Bridge by the Old Bag Factory. It shows the current level of the Elkhart River. Reporting for Globe News, I'm Amelia Lee. Thanks to Amelia for that coverage. Now, Mike, you and I both spent an evening selling merchandise at an event, one that we had been promoting for a while. Yeah, we got to listen to a lot of pretty good music, too. Of course, we're talking about Lotus, a band which includes two Goshen College alumni. Lotus made a homecoming stop in the middle of their U.S. tour. Colin Eccles sat down with the band. If you have listened to 91.1 The Globe in recent months, you've probably heard or heard about a group that goes by the name Lotus. The five-piece instrumental jam band started on Goshen College's campus in the late 90s and has grown a fan base that stretches to all corners of the world. Some followers like Josh Lively have such a strong fandom that they don't just catch a show every year or two, but a handful of shows in a row, following the band City to City. Yeah. Me and my fiance went to the Columbus show, the Cincinnati show, the Louisville show. Um, we're at this show, Goshen, Indiana, then we're going to Indianapolis tomorrow. This show didn't just bring out the diehard fans. The crowd also had some new fans who were excited to see Lotus in person for the first time. I have to admit I don't know much about Lotus, but when I went out and watched it, I thought uh, it would be something that both Ron and I would really enjoy going to. Lots of times that we go out, it's because it's something I want to do, and it seems like a band that 
that both of us would really enjoy. While each performance is a special one for the fans, for Lotus, this isn't just any other show. It's been over a decade since they last performed in the city where they got their start. It's cool. Like we have a lot of connections here in Goshen. Our parents went to school here. One of our other brothers also went to school here. Um, so yeah, and college is just such formative years, even though we're really only here for um, three or four years. Um, yeah, it brings back a lot of memories being here and um, just seeing the buildings brings back memories for me of people that I met here and um, things that I learned and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm interested to kind of swing around campus and kind of get some more of those memories. But again, this isn't the first time that the Goshen Theater has played host to Lotus. 12 years ago, uh, I helped bring Lotus to the Goshen Theater for a concert. It was a huge success. I actually originally knew the band when I was a college student at Goshen College, and I've been a lifelong fan ever since. It might be a while before Lotus returns home for another show, but the band members want their longtime listeners to know that they appreciate their support through the years and for passing the torch to the next generation of Lotus fans. Yeah, we're just very grateful for um, people that check out our music, but yeah, people that have listened for so long. I mean, every, every night on tour, someone will come up and say, oh, this is my 15th show, this is my 80th show, this is my 100th show, which is mind-boggling to me. So um, yeah, we love that support. At the show last night in uh, Louisville, one of our longtime fans brought his daughter to the show and she was a teenager so it just shows how long that he's been listening to the music that he could introduce it to her daughter and here in Goshen um, some of those original fans like gave us a launch ramp to start uh, music as a career and give us um, kind of the optimism that we could pursue it and um, those some of those people are still around and coming to shows and um, it, uh, it means a lot that those people are still listening. The show was a huge success. The band went beyond their normal catalog and even pulled out some old fan favorites from their time at GC. Reporting for Globe News, I'm Colin Eccles. Thanks, Colin, for that great report. Wait, Mike, did you change your clothes? Well, not completely, Kate. I just really got into that last story. Well, was that one of the t-shirts that you were selling at the concert? It is. I mean, actually, this was the set, my second choice. They had the shirt that I really liked, they were out of stock in my size. But this one's grown on me. I like it. Yeah, I, th I think it certainly has. After the break, we're visiting the Big Apple, and a little later, spring is only 11 days away. What events are happening in the area is coming your way on the Globe News Report. I came to Goshen thinking that I'd just be acting, but over the course of my four years, I've taken part in all the other facets of the theater, and I think that's helped me gain a wider appreciation for theater as a whole. I mean, it takes all those things that I'm interested in, like design aspects of theater, the environmental studies course I took, and it takes my music major, and it just focuses it all into theater. Welcome back to the Globe News Report. I'm Mike Morell. And I'm Kate Boddicker. Kate, the Globe's trip to New York City is so recent I can still taste the pizza. You brought a camera with you, as I recall. I did. It was a bit of a hassle in the end, but it was totally worth it to capture all of the amazing moments. With the world finally opening up after the COVID-19 shutdown, the Globe was finally able to return to New York City for the first time in three years. I wanted to make sure and get all of the details from our trip. After three years of letdowns for the Globe, New York City is finally open for awards season. This was student station manager Amelia Lee's first trip to the Big Apple. I really wanted to go to the IBS awards and conference since I was a freshman. It was one of the points of interest of me coming to Goshen College was the IBS awards, going to New York City, going with the group. And then when it all got canceled because of COVID, I was kind of bummed. I mean, it wasn't the pinnacle of my experience of college by any means, but it was very special to get to go. And I think even more special because I was so tight with everyone already. In a similar situation was Dante Stanton, the sports director for the Globe. IBS 2023 was a really cool experience, especially for me. I'm a junior, um, but I came in during the COVID-19 pandemic, so um, everything was canceled. Everything was canceled. Um, so there was no in-person award ceremony for the past two years, and I've been nominated the past two years. Um, so missing out on that experience of going to New York City was definitely heartbreaking for the past couple of years. 
Though the trip was educational, the awards ceremony was certainly on everyone's mind, especially those that brought home the gold. I won Best Student Station Manager in the nation at the IBS Awards, and I think that meant so much to me because it's my first year as station manager. I'm a junior, which never happens. And to win that award and know that I worked so hard to get there and so hard to do the best I could in this leadership position. So winning that award, it, it was just so, so special. And I didn't think I'd win it. I was up against these big schools, NYU, and their station manager, and then Little Goshen got that award. Came home with a couple of awards for the first time. Um, I've been nominated for a few awards over the years. Uh, the past two years, I haven't won anything, um, but I came home with two this year, and that was really special. Um, probably the most special one was I was named best uh, sports director for the radio side of things, which was really great. It means a lot to me. It means a lot to be the sports director for this station, and then, of course, a lot of that appreciation for that goes to my staff. A common theme in the stories of both these leaders was appreciation for the education and opportunities that allowed them to achieve so highly, especially that of Professor Jason Samuel. Jason, the station manager, the real one, had to write a letter of recommendation for me. And seeing his support in my life has just made my career go leaps and bounds further than it would have ever been, just having him there for me. When I, when I came to Goshen College, one of the first things that Jason Samuel, director of the radio, 91.1 The Globe, one of the first things he said to me was, when I was meeting him for the first time, he says, is, hopefully when we go to New York in March, which is when it always is, um, we can win a couple of awards, and uh, you can go up there, grab your award, come back, and I'll give you a big hug. And for three years, Obviously, that couldn't come true because of COVID. And the first thing he did when I came back after winning my first award was he gave me a great big hug. And it was an amazing feeling. And it was, it was a, a prophecy completed. And it was a really, really great moment. Something that I've been looking forward to for a long time. That hug meant a lot. And the work that Jason has put in uh, to help us over the last couple of years has meant a lot. The Globe ended up coming home with six awards, but that doesn't stop the focus from being on what more can be achieved next year. Reporting for Globe News, I'm Alyssa McDonald. Thanks for the story, Kate. It really brought me back to the trip. I had so much fun. Wait, again? Now a Yankees hat? I thought you were from Cincinnati. Hey, when in Rome. Or I guess I should say Manhattan. I had such a great time. I did too. I, so what was your favorite part? I really enjoyed the 9-11 memorial. It was such an emotional experience. How about you? I mean, I agree. It was really emotional. But for me, I, I mean, I hate to say it, but I think it had to be the food. Eating at all the delis, getting authentic food in Chinatown, and trying a morning bagel. I mean, you just can't beat it. When we return, spring is in the air. We'll be showing you what is in store for the Goshen area in the coming months.
certainly sounds like there's a lot of exciting events to look forward to. Personally, I know I'm actually helping out with the musical, so I think it's going to be a really great show. Can't wait to see it. Yeah, I am really looking forward to a lot of that too, but honestly, right now, my sole focus is when all of it's done, I'm really looking forward to our trip to Japan. I know it's going to be a great time. I'm looking forward to it as well. Well, thank you for joining us for this edition of The Globe News Report. Make sure to check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at 911theglobe, and check out our website, globeradio.org, for more videos and local content. Until next time, this is The Globe News Report.